In this test, we will try to reload the guns as fast as possible in an attempt to find the quickest handling. Did not want to positively release. No, my reload time. Oh, open first, then in. Helps. Yeah. This thing, much to I think a lot of people's surprise, actually has a very fast and very, very smooth and easy reload. Ah, oh, lame. I'm assuming that a certain Francophile has a little bit more experience. When you hit the, the mag release here, the mags just drop free. You gotta just make sure that you give it a good depress, but it feels like Bolt's actually holding it in a little bit. While this grip right here is super awkward when you're trying to actually use it from the hip, it's a really good leverage point to positively get a hold of that, frankly, ambidextrous mag release. I had actually should have rested my hands on this forward grip right here in order to give myself some extra force to push forward. There's an extended tab on the back end of the floor plate that locks up inside here. So it's actually pretty slick and easy to put the back end of the mag in, slide it forward, Lock it in place. Honestly, you think it'd be a, a lot more troublesome to get used to, and no, I'm going off of pure mind memory and not muscle memory, and it's still very quick. Yeah, I think there is a great potential for this to be the fastest one for reload, but unfortunately, it's snagging to think a little bit due to user error on that one. This is another surprising point for the show shot. I like these. My biggest takeaway is that I almost lost my hearing protection and almost lost the hearing in my radio. <laughs> the 30 6 version of this gun is not nearly as fast to reload. This push button, you're gonna wanna push it forward and it does drop the mag pretty readily. Thing is, with the straight magazine for 30 6 you've got this big long magazine well to hold it in place. Now unfortunately you can't just drop the mag straight down because it's just gonna hit the ground when you put it down like this. They kept the same magazine release mechanism, but you have to basically grab it and then grab the body of the magazine with the rest of your hand. So you actually have to make sure you tip it to the side on top of that, which is a bit awkward. What I found the best thing to do has been grab the thing and get it about a quarter inch out and then reposition your hand and yank it out. It's not horrible. There's one thing I did not notice here that I have noticed on the range, which is that when these are fully loaded, they seem to take on a little bit more bulge at the top and they become harder to press in. It's a little, little tricky how these go in because they look kind of like they ought to go in at an angle, when in reality it is, I find the best is tip in the back end of the mag, rotate it vertical, and then lock it in place. This slab, and this magazine, and I don't know what the combination is to my eye, 
I lose all sense of depth of field. Like I start to aim for this hole in this orientation here is where I mess up. This one did go in pretty quickly and I didn't really have any issues with it. I can't say that there's a solution to that, although any sort of flaring would help, I'm sure, uh, with that slight mess up to guide it in. It's not a great system. It's obviously a, a system built, adapted to the existing design of the show shop. So a little slower, still feasible though. Overall, I'd put it sort of in the mediocre category of what we've seen today. Definitely would love to get faster on it, but I don't know if I'm going to take the time to shoot that one enough to get faster with it. That was remarkably good for this gun. Honestly, not bad. So with this one, when it comes to reloading, it really does require you to just make sure you follow it in sequence. And if this goes in smoothly, it's still a relatively slow reload because you have to manually pop this uh, bolt stop, basically. Uh, I goofed on popping the lever. So if I hadn't done that, I would have saved a second or two. You need to make sure you're popping your tab every time. I had no problem doing that. I'd already seen Othias and Ian have to shoot this one. The problem is, is with the feed strip, you need to make sure that you're actually touching the top as you're feeding it through. It's got two little narrow ledges that you have to get bits of that brass strip on smoothly. To make sure that it fits right in there perfectly. And trust me, as you saw, it does unfortunately not seat well at all if it isn't perfectly aligned. You can't force it. If you try and force it, it just flat out doesn't work. You can see how much weight's on this thing. It's flopping. It's trying to pull the whole gun over to that side. I know that Cavalry did have a 15 rounder that would make this a lot easier without all the flop, but you'd still have probably the most difficult and fiddly alignment out of anything we've seen for this series. It's, it's horrible. I'm gonna say that the trick to this gun is to pay attention lining up your first strip and then from there, interlink them uh, with a catch tab that really allows the assistant gunner to keep things moving on infinitum. This is really terrible. And of course, this isn't specifically part of our test, but all the cartridges are on the bottom. So if your strip isn't really nicely tensioned and in proper working order, recoil will make cartridges fall out of the strip. Even though I knew what I was doing, even though I've done this a dozen times now, it's unfortunate it cost me that time, but it's got to be done right in order to actually feed those rounds well. So I'm going to rank this pretty freaking low on reload time. This is probably the worst reload gun that I've ever run into.
Uh, I've played with this gun a little more than the others. And I will say, you can get unlucky in terms of the feed position, especially if it's been sitting or moved around a bit. Not gonna lie, I'm having trouble with the Lewis gun. This pan wants to be loaded ever so gently. You need to be able to thumb it in for the tab, and then you need to just be able to wiggle it down in. So I futz this up slightly by not properly locking the pan into position. I feel like I probably got a little lucky with that shimmy. Me personally, if I'm trying to do it fast and quick, I've noticed that I was just forcing it down on there. So I had to take my time with it in order to make sure the pan was perfectly aligned in there as it went down and was seated. That's one of those elements of how the, the Lewis gum gun reload is a little bit finicky, a little bit complicated. I have known the Lewis to be a bear, especially if you get any kind of grime up in this action. However, I think you have to balance that against the capacity of the magazines. You get 47 rounds in this thing. I'm not seeing any other system that gives you this kind of capacity with that rapidity. The bigger the magazine gets, the harder it is to give it a really easy, fast, and, and per always smooth reload uh, system. It's a little bit finicky overall, I would say, but once you get it in there seated, presumably, everything should go fine. It doesn't always work super smooth, but it's usually pretty good, especially once you get a little practice doing it. <laughs> and loose. I knew I found a problem. 11.82. Not bad, but realistically, I feel like this could, you could dominate with this one. Not quite as fast as it could have been, but this thing has, is set up for an extremely fast reload. You got a magazine release right here at the back. Catch it with the heel of your hand. Pull the mag forward. Being able to pop this lever, follow the mag out, it's a natural motion of you just pushing out towards it. Pre-position my mag so that uh, ammo's away so that I could grab here and just pop and go. You should be picking it up like this. Nose it in, lock it back, and you're uh, ready to go. It is pretty quick in that as long as you can tow that mag in just right, it you can get really fast with it. You see this distended follower that's sticking out of the mag? Well, that's because it's got to push past the boundaries of the magazine body itself in order to continue to feed the gun. So if you don't commit properly, no luck. So while I got my toe in, I accidentally tucked the outside of the spring into what you would consider to be the hopper well of the gun, and it tied it up. That toe on there is it's so ambiguous, it's hard to realistically feel that you're seated in there. It doesn't it doesn't have a positive lip with it that you feel as you nudge it in. I towed in just fine, but I didn't commit to dropping her down. And I actually like that if you're cycling the action on the right side. It feels natural, feels more like a rifle with that. That's what I'm used to. There, there's a replacement part in here that's giving us a couple occasional feed issues. That's why I only had one shot uh, after my reload. Easily one of the better loaders, but not perfect. You do have to pay attention. Overall, the Madsen is probably, it's the best, fastest reload.
822, not too shabby. I think really the big issue is for reload on this one, because I'm having to be prone with it, I'm not able to really hold it up for very, for very long because I'm having to reach so far forward with that that for me, it's, it's a bit of a strain. Uh, the only thing that keeps the BAR mag from being, the BAR from having a really good reload is this button being right in the front of the trigger guard. It's a little awkward to get to. Of course, I am doing this right-handed. Release is fast and drops free. Alignment is easy and quick. I do um, like that push button. I feel like that's actually pretty positive. And even though I didn't have gravity helping me when I dropped it, it still popped it slightly out for me to give me a bit of an assist on that. The only thing that's odd to me is the charging handle position. I understand that if I was standing or walking around, I would hold with my right hand and work with my left. But laying here like I am, I'm too tempted to work it like a good old bolt action rifle and reach for on the right side. That would have made this a lot more comfortable. I would probably agree with Matthias on this one. I'm just so used to for a rifle setup and this is just what it feels like, it's just a rifle. I'm gonna wanna bolt it on the side. So it's incredibly awkward for that. But otherwise, extremely good. I mean, this is easily top spot at the moment for this reload drill. It is one of the best reloads of a World War II era light machine gun that we're gonna be looking at. Mag goes in easy, locks into place easy, comes out easy, it's good. Overall, I think this one's probably gonna be one of our best, fastest reloads. <laughs> bipod walk and <laughs> I twisted right on my bipod Ugh. it was uh, sliding around a good bit on me when I had the feet reverse the other way I just thought it might give me a, a better position and actually keep the gun a little more stable for me if I did reverse them and sure enough it did this whole thing's moving around and you have to spend you have to be a lot more cognizant of if I'm pulling on the belt, I have to hold on the gun somewhere so I don't tip the, the gun over. Steady hand counts for a lot when your gun waggles in every direction. This is not supposed to be a gun that is run by one person. This is supposed to be a gun that's run by a team and you have an assistant. You actually have a couple of assistants to do a lot of this work. And I guarantee you as part of that team effort, people were just plain holding this in place. And unfortunately, it's not the quickest to be able to sit on here, especially while lying prone. And by the way, I'll point out, as much as we're having fun, this is not really loaded up with that much ammunition right now. There's a few rounds in here to kind of give it some weight, but it's much lighter than it would be fully loaded, and we're still struggling with it on our own, which again, 
not designed to do. This never had any hope of being a fast reload. I'm just very happy that it was a relatively smooth reload. Overall, uh, she's always going to be a slow loader, unfortunately, but I, I, I'm not too upset with that time. I just, uh, with a little more practice, I think you can get faster, but. Despite it all, I still have a lot of love for the 0815 because don't forget, as much as this looks like a struggle, 24 gets me another 100 rounds. So my fastest reload time on any other gun divided by capacity kind of cuts that down. So there is a strong case for saying that I get a lot of rounds for a little time on this particular gun. We have been on the range since 7 a.m. and it is now currently 1 a.m. the next day. So considering that, and this is our what third night in a row of about two hours of sleep, I think I did okay. Guys, it's a special sort of person that not only opens up their indoor shooting range to belt-fed Maxim guns, but keeps it open until midnight so people like us can get filming sessions done here to bring to you guys. So we'd like to give a real big thank you to Taylor here at CNS Shooting Sports in North Charleston. Um, thank you very much for accommodating us. We couldn't have made this happen without you. Thanks for coming, guys. Really appreciate it. If you're in the area, if you need a range, he's your man. Most talkative range owner in Charleston. Probably. <laughs> All right, so um, we borrowed an indoor facility and got to really get to work in there, which actually I really enjoyed the controlled environment. Um, and honestly, you guys need to be able to see what we were doing with our hands, yeah. and it was much easier in there. So um, all we needed to do was find out how much time to go from shooting to shooting again. Like, we have a period in which we've run out of rounds, and we just got to get back in action. And this is supposed to be team equipment, and yet we are individual people because we are testing the worst case scenario to shake out all the worst ergonomics of these systems. Yep. How do we land? Like you told me before we started, there was sort of like a middle of the road that just included a bunch of them. Yeah. So our middle of the road time average between the three of us was basically 10 to 13 seconds. Right. And in that pack, we have the Lewis, both of the Shoshas, and the Madsen. Uh, the BAR came out a little bit faster. Okay. Um, which makes sense to me. The BAR has the most modern system. Oh, yeah, it's the most rifle-like, too. So it's all stuff that we're completely used to. Pop in the mag, just you charge the handle and go. The only thing yeah. that would have made it faster, I was saying, if Ian had shot it left-handed, oh, he'd have done fine. He'd been super fast with it. If we'd shot it right-handed and then had the charging handle on the right side, yeah, that would have made a world of a difference, too, so right there. about that, a um, couple things. One, this is another test where very, very clearly your competition training is paying off. This is probably the biggest difference of everything we've seen because... So that's just flat out wrong. Oh? 822, 893, 797. On the, no, not just the BAR, but I'm talking about oh. on these guns as a whole. Oh, the okay. BAR actually, so the BAR, that's where I'm going. The BAR is the exception because that's the system that's the most familiar to mm -hmm. me and I in terms of doing something rapidly. Um, and then Everything else, though, you start pulling further and further ahead, and I start pulling ahead of May even just because of my ability to get down there and sort of flex my muscles, but little I have. But, again, we're taking an average, and that the differences between us, as much as you might want to mock, go for it in the comments or wherever. I expect but, it. Um, disregarding the mocking, we need that spread because right. that gives us an idea of the best and worst scenarios. And so the BAR, very even performance across all of us is where yep. I'm going. So that means it had a very tight system. There's fewer operations. I would say, yeah. from my perspective, two problems with the BAR. Mm -hmm. The inset magazine release versus being on the side. Yep. And uh, the not, not, I'm not even going to say the charging handle on the other side. That's a problem for me as a righty. But the big problem for me with the charging handle is having to then rack it back forward. Hmm. I don't know why, but changing my inertia at that moment, instead of just going, if I could just go whop and go for my grip versus whop, re-secure here for click, let go, come back down to, that for some reason really threw me more than just okay. having it on the other side. What I like about the BAR is that there's nothing to really go fund go catastrophically wrong. Right. You can't mess up the magazine in such a way that the ammo starts falling out of it. Uh, you may not get the magazine well, but you'll get it on the second try. It's big enough. Um, you can't like forget to do a step in the charging. 
No. Um, you, if it's better if you load the mag with the bolt open, but you can load the mag with the bolt closed and then rack it. Now, who's the offender for bolt open mag loading? Uh, the Shosha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, you can sort of kind of do it there, but it it's easier with the 30 out six. I think you start possibly doing damage to the feed loops and stuff too that way. Well, they don't care about that. They're disposable mags. No, but, but with the eight millimeter in particular, it is far. You, it's not quite 100% essential, but it's kind of like a modern, like an MP5. You basically just lock the thing open first, right. then put the mag in. And then the BAR, before we, I forget to mention, again, no mm -hmm. bipod on this one. So essentially, you're having right. to stabilize it in your hand yes. to shift it around however which way you want to pop the mag in. You have no assist for sort of planting it, and yet it's so light and easy. It's weird, but with the bipod, it might have gotten a little bit faster. It might have, it yeah. Would have, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, oh, uh, speaking of guns that fall apart. We said the Madsen was sort of in the middle of the pack. I want to cover something there because you guys saw me throw my magazine. Uh, two problems with the Madsen. The outside spring, which is necessary not just to retain it, but also to retain the sort of distended follower when you take it out because of the pseudo hopper system. Um, that spring, the fact that it can get tucked in, obviously bad. That happened only once out of all of our handling of the gun, and that was yeah. on me under pressure, and we kept that I mean, not that we would necessarily redo just because of something like that, but I'm glad we had that moment because at that point we all went, that can happen. Like, we just not experienced <laughs> yeah. it. And then the other thing with that gun is all three of us thought if it had a more positive toe, right, it would have just made it so much because whap, flap, and then everything that slowed down even you is set the toe because if you get the toe wrong, not and you only, come back, you will splash the rounds, and right. that's the yep. issue. It's not just that you don't get it in; you have to try again. It's you don't get it in, and now you've got extra rounds lying around, and you're you're in a bad place. Yeah. I think it's interesting to point out that on later iterations of the Madsen after World War One, they changed that. They have a much more pronounced and stronger front front catch on the magazines. Nice. So, um, and then our other, I think, really one of our other big outliers is the Hotchkiss, where you and I. Did it really nice and smooth, and we had times that are pretty respectable. We were both eleven seconds. Yours was probably. Did you have a slight advantage on me? Like yeah, tenths of a second. And yet that was probably the smoothest load of that gun, the entire time we've had these guns. And that's for all the tests we've done with it too. Like this is yeah. that was incredible. Thank you. But the problem with it is, it's a complex system. You have to do a bunch of things all in the proper order, and then you have to get just the right touch on that feed strip by feel, because you can't see the, the surfaces that have to interlock, you cannot see from the shooting position. And I'm actually glad we kept mine, not that we wouldn't, but like mine was a great example of if you don't line it up just right. And I mean, we talked about that earlier, but I did everything in the right sequence with the problems of the feed strip. I just didn't have it at right up touching, like kissing the top of the feed block, essentially. The feel on that is terrible. And, and before you guys are like, oh, I just can't reload it. That exact situation happened to both of us multiple times. Every time. Every I mean, I would say nine tenths of my loads on that gun were me fiddling around with it exactly like you saw her. Or having someone around. assist us to load it yeah. even nine like we had 10, another yes, friend. We ended up having yeah. help. And yeah. even as the loader, you would sit there and be like, nope, nope. Because what yeah. happens, I, here's my problem with that. It's a brass strip. you got to get it in and up. It's you a sharp to, brass strip. It has to be that. even in front and back, and they reuse yep. these strips. They did. Yep. If there's any sort of torque in that strip, making oh, contact front you, and back at the same you, time. You mean like torque from 30 rounds hanging off of right? it. Right. <laughs> and then the way you know that you made contact is that you're transmitting the sensation of probably less than a quarter of an inch of brass on steel through six inches of brass. Yeah. So you're like, you're just... You, you're, yeah. I think that's it. And if you shove it, it's wrong. God help you. Because sometimes it'll get halfway in there and then you can't get it back out for life or yeah. probably death. It's That was probably the worst reloading system we had. The closest thing to a, like, maybe it's not quite so bad about that system is that you can actually hook one strip into a previous strip. So if you have a team, as as the gunner gets to the end of one strip, the, the loader can actually lock the the next strip in and then you don't have to align it it'll just suck the next strip in the i mean if that goes well i just I'm, not, I'm concerned that's not even going to hang in there because the problem is that strip is also bouncing as you're shooting the gun too so yeah. keeping that strip no, like hooked into have, the other your loader would have to that, actually support and follow and so that's why this is a team served weapon that's one of those processes i think that runs awesome when you're at the factory demo 
of the gun. Yes. And they're like, here's our crew. We have you can denied fire for infinity. We've denied them food for a week and forced them to do nothing but practice Hotchkiss portative reloads to impress you. And then troops get the gun and they're like, this is useless. Well, guys, that's why we, how we screwed up. We need to go do this for like a week. No, famously, <laughs> this is the gun known as the daylight gun. And I can see why, because if, if I try to use that thing in the dark, uh, there's no way, even knowing now and having some turns on it, yeah. It takes severe training to get that gun right. I couldn't imagine doing that just by feel. I mean, you can feel it when you've got the clip in right, but <laughs> it takes a few seconds to feel it right. Props to the the Marines or the the Marines Strip. or the Army at, uh, at in Columbus, New Mexico, yeah. <laughs> where, where that thing came from. There was there was an actual U.S. military engagement um, during World War One, although in Not New in Mexico, uh, where they four of those came into service. And they fired like 20,000 rounds through those four guns in the course of a couple hours. Nice. They're reliable guns. We, I don't think we had a single real malfunction with no, it. No, no, no malfunctions. Once the strip was in there correctly and everything right. was aligned, it worked fine. Yeah. Terrible for loading. It's reliable, it's just very difficult to use. All right, and so we're, we're, we're going to know the Hotchkiss. Where are we going now? That brings us to our last. And the Hotchkiss, by the way, was the number six well, time we, out of this seven. Can't, this can't be the last because you, you did get... We have one weird loader before this, which is that you have to be able to align and push and click. Yeah, that's the the Lewis gun, and that came in at 12.7 seconds average. And May had the most trouble with this because yes. muscle memory for May was to pitch forward and rock back, and that just will not go. You've got to right. come at it square on. Yep. If yep. you can get square on and rattle, it's easy every time, but... If you come at any awkward angle, and I, this is something I've had to load a bunch of this gun in testing and helping you out with filming and things like that. And so I've gotten used to just centering it. You've played with them before. You just center it. But if you come off center, that's a nightmare. Other than that, though, and it's not a hard skill to learn. Right. It's not. It's just for some people, especially in your case, it just every time knows down. And unfortunately, when I was laying prone with it, I was having a really hard time noticing it the first like few attempts because I did a few dry runs just to make sure I was like, all right, no, I'm not lining this up right. It, it finally, and even I, like we talked about in the test, like, and you saw it, I had to get up on my knee in order to make sure I was looking down at it, getting it straight on. And that's just something that I'm gonna have to practice with prone on that one now, because at this point, I'm just gonna be dedicated to getting that right prone. That's That pissed me off. Okay, so now slowest gun. Um. If you're going to point out the one that should have been slow but wasn't, I'm going to point out the one people think is going to be slow but it wasn't. That's the 8mm Shosha. That thing, if you're practiced on it, is faster than a BAR. Oh, no, oh, that yeah. thing's terrific. But, but that goes back to the thing where we said, what if you had the bipods so that you could just be supported? But it's not just that. The mag release on the 8mm Shosha, on both of them actually, is in it. you can hit it from your firing grip, which is a really modern concept that we don't see anywhere else sort of the BAR, but it's this weird trigger finger pushing forward thing. Yeah. yeah. And because of the way the those half moon magazines are, are actually locked into the gun, as soon as you release the mag release, it drops free. That thing was one of the few mags that will basically drop free reliably every time. Right. And then unfortunately, Othias and I, like we didn't have like the bolt handle like pull back. So like ours just kept, the mags kept snagging. Yeah, our, you had the benefit the of handle. actually, you own. And then fairy. I didn't push the release hard enough forward. I put too much downward force that caused it to not release as positively. Yeah, there's a lot of little finicky parts with you that. You get it, it right though be. and it goes. Oh, I had, yeah. My time on that was under six seconds. Which yeah, was, that was the impressive. best reload was I had for anything. That was, I was so that was it was a clear winner for <laughs> any like of the reloads from all so, of us. So now, having having gotten that out of the way for the honor of the Shosha, um, the Maxim gun was, of course, not surprisingly, the slowest. Our average time was twenty five point four seconds. Yeah. So obviously, you know, this one came out the slowest. That means it's the worst one, right? No. Well, maybe. I mean, it depends how badly you need that first shot after a reload. But the difference is. In this process, at the end of it, you get 100 rounds, which is more than double anything else in the test. So we went through and actually calculated, we divided out the magazine size by the time, the average reload time. So like for every second that you spend reloading, how many rounds are you getting for your work? And by that measurement, the maximum is actually our winner at just under four rounds per second of reloading time. Um, we uh, The close second is actually the Lewis gun. So both yeah. of these go to high capacity, and realistically, the, I mean, the, the, if you're talking about capacity versus quickness, the MG815 just beat it over the head with sheer capacity. Exactly. Lewis yes. gun, however, actually fairly quick, and, 
and by the way, fairly large capacity. Probably could have beaten the 0815 except for May pitching the mag. Like if if, if yeah, if, that's if, true. If you I had, did bring if it. If you had developed down. up the square up system that we were using, I don't. I can almost guarantee you we'd have beaten even the 0815, even a hundred round belt with 47 rounds, just because of the click 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 click. So as a the, team, I would think a Lewis gun could probably yeah. run faster than an 0815. The thing with the Maxim is it's not a system like the Hotchkiss. It's not a difficult process to do, it's just an extended process. There's a lot that you have to do. You have to take off the old belt box, and by the way, we only had one box, which is why you saw us take it off and then put it back on. That simulates taking off the empty and putting on the loaded one. But you put it on, and then you have to fish the, the belt through the feed block, then you have to tension it up, you have to rack the gun twice to get around actually into the chamber, and only then can you start shooting. <laughs> but there's not really anything you can mess it up. You can mess oh, up. Oh, I can mess it up because in my case, that bipod, because whenever oh, I went yeah, to rack, it threw the mass around and the bipod just <laughs> on the concrete floor that was under our blanket just whoop. And, and then I mean, for me, like I even told you all in the, like earlier, like I had to swivel it around so that I actually had more, like I had more force coming against me. That way I wasn't sif shifting as much. And even then it still twisted on me. Yeah. So, Which is, don't use them on concrete floors. They, that really was not a design thing. That was us the, trying to, to get it to work. Those little them. pointy ends on the bipod, yep. they don't dig into concrete. They mud. do best in mud. We should have gotten some chair stoppers and just... <laughs> there you go. So that's where we end up. BAR was the fastest. Maxim was the most efficient. I suppose it's time for another test then. Yes, it is. Probably. Hey guys, May over here from CN Arsenal, just here to wrap us up at the end of the episode. Thank you all again for watching. And again, a big thank you to Brownells. They, again, seriously, they threw some cash at us to help us with this project, and they really didn't ask for anything in return. So definitely, seriously, guys, go check out their products. They, they have everything that we use for tools on our channel and for our hobbies, and they will definitely uh, be useful for you for yours as well. Um, and right now, if you are interested in seeing more of these episodes and you're, just, you're a little bit impatient, which is fine, you want everything right now, go over to cnarsenal.com. You can have the whole episode series for Project Lightning all at once, just for a couple of bucks. Otherwise, if you want to, you can just go over to CN Arsenal's channel, and we already have the total damage episode up. So. However you want to handle it. Later, guys. Let us sit here and look pretty? Yep. Yeah. Well, you might want to talk to the man a little. I hate cameras so much. <laughs> <laughs>